Welcome to Organium's Puzzle Box. Today we're diving into NVIDIA DLSS implementation for Unreal Engine 5. While we're focusing on Unreal Engine 5.3, these techniques work across different engine versions as well. This step-by-step -step guide will show you how to implement NVIDIA DLSS and utilize NVIDIA's own interface for precise control over your scene. You'll see that DLSS delivers its most significant performance gains in play mode, though the viewport still benefits from DLSS super resolution, just, you know, without the frame generation or NVIDIA Reflex features. For this demonstration, I'm using my World Force project with GeForce RTX 4090. Now, it's, this is an ideal ground since its Nanite displays landscape in Unreal Engine 5.3 provides a demanding workload that really showcases DLSS improvements. While AMD users might want to explore uh, FSR for similar functionality, this tutorial specifically covers NVIDIA's implementation, as I actually don't have an AMD card to try out, even though that FSR works with other video cards as well. Now, currently, this plugin isn't available for Unreal Engine 5.5, but support is expected in the near future. Now, uh, let's begin by navigating to Epic Games Fab Marketplace and searching for DLSS and FSR in the search box. Now, in the search results, you'll find both NVIDIA DLSS and AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3. Now, for this tutorial, we'll be focusing on NVIDIA DLSS since we're working with an NVIDIA graphics card. On NVIDIA's official uh, Fab page, you'll notice several promotional images. While these might not tell us much visually, you know, the, the key features listed are what we're interested in, particularly the resolution scaling capability. Now click the view external side button to access NVIDIA's download page and uh, scrolling down the page, you'll find the DLSS 3.7. Download for Unreal Engine. Take note of the engine version compatibility list. Currently, there's no support for 5.5, just so you know and accept the terms and conditions and select the Unreal Engine 5.3 package for this demonstration. Once downloaded, you'll receive an archive file that will extract in the next step. Be mindful that you can use it for Unreal Engine 5.4 as well if you'd like, or 5.2. Now, after extracting the archive, you'll find your, you know, four items. Documentation, plugin, samples, and a getting started with a video guide. Opening the getting, guide, getting started guide will show you the basic setup process similar to what we've covered, you know, but with additional details. The guide confirms you'll need Unreal Engine 5.3 installed, which is the version we're using for this demonstration. Now, the key step here is moving the DLSS folder to the correct location in your, your Unreal Engine installation. Let me walk you through the exact path. First, navigate to your Unreal Engine installation directory, then follow this path. Unreal Engine 5.3, Engine, Plugins, Marketplace. This Marketplace folder is where you'll, pass, uh, you'll paste the NVIDIA DLSS folder from the archive. Think of it as an adding a new tool to Unreal Engine's toolbox. It needs to go in the right drawer to work properly. After placing the DLSS plugin, you can launch any Unreal Engine 5.3 project to begin implementation. However, if you're planning to use DLSS with a movie render queue, which many of you might want to do, you'll need a few additional plugins in from this folder. So specifically, you'll need the uh, three components from the extracted folder. The DLSS folder we just moved, the DLSS movie pipeline support folder, and the NVIDIA image sharpening, NIS for short, folder. These three plugins working together will give you all DLSS functionality with a movie render queue support. Just like uh, we did with the main DLSS folder, copy, copy all these components into the same marketplace folder we accessed earlier. Think of it as uh, completing the full set of tools you'll need for high quality DLSS rendering. Now, after copying all the necessary files to your Unreal Engine marketplace folder, you can open your project. While the project will launch normally, there's one crucial step remaining. You'll need to enable uh, these plugins for any project where you want to use DLSS. This is a project specific text te uh, setting, so you'll need to do this for each new project where you want to implement the DLSS functionality. Now, let me show you how to enable these plugins in my new World Forge environment. Navigate to the plugins menu and use the search box to look for DLSS. This will reveal two important components the Movie Render Queue DLSS support and DLSS Super Resolution. 
Enable both by checking their boxes, and this will prompt an engine rest restart. Now you might notice something interesting. The NVIDIA frame generation feature mentioned in the documentation isn't showing up. Even if you specifically search for it, even typing frame generation yields no results. So let's fix that. While the engine restarts, which won't take long depending on your hardware, let's take a quick detour to the DLSS folder we extracted earlier. Inside the plugins folder within the samples directory, you'll find a project called DLSS test. This is valuable as it provides a, a reference implementation of the DLSS interface. But here's the key step we missed. We need to copy the streamline folder to our Unreal Engine marketplace directory. We need to copy both folders and remember, these go into the marketplace folder, not your project folder. Now, when we return to our project, we can search for either Streamline or DLSS. With these additional components visible, enable both and restart the engine one more time. This will finally give us access to frame generation functionality. Now, back in our project, let's try a different search approach. Instead of searching for specific features, you know, just type in NVIDIA in the plugins menu. This gives us a comprehensive view of all the NVIDIA related components, including some essential ones we haven't enabled yet. We we'll want to enable NVIDIA NIS, which is NVIDIA Image Scaling. This is, a, uh, this is actually a crucial, it's actually crucial for the LSS to function properly. While we're here, let's also enable NVIDIA Reflex, which helps reduce latency when using the LSS. The reason why I've taken this detour and just doing all these steps of enabling things and restarting is because I would like to kind of show people where they could go wrong and what they could meet, what they could be missing. Now, restart the engine one more time to apply these changes. Let's check our performance baseline. In this World Forge environment running on Unreal Engine 5.3, nanite displacement on landscapes, you know, is quite demanding. You can see we're getting around 20 milliseconds with this landscape and foliage setup. While this would perform better in Unreal Engine 5.5, let's focus on optimizing what we have. If we check the screen per setting settings, you'll notice we can make custom overrides. But the NVIDIA DLSS options are invisible here. They actually used to be in previous versions. In fact, DLSS doesn't work in the viewport quite the way you might expect. Now, according to the DLSS Super Resolution Quick Star Guide, viewport support is disabled by default. To get the proper interface, we'll need to borrow from the DLSS sample project that I showed you earlier. This project runs in Unreal Engine 5.2 by default, but we can upgrade it to 5.3. If you get a read-only error, here's a quick fix. Right-click the folder, go to Properties, Untick read read only and apply. Now you can switch to Unreal Engine 5.3 without issues. Inside the sample project, you'll find example meshes and materials demonstrating NVIDIA's capabilities. The interface provides options for resolution upscaling, RTX settings, and NVIDIA image scaling from ultra quality to performance mode. While this works in play mode, we need to implement it in our viewport as well. We'll do that later. Now let's open the level blueprint. The key component is the event begin play connected to the BPW NGX widget. Note the class name with um, the NGX, you know, we'll need this later. Navigate in the content folder, find this class and use the migrate option to bring these elements into your own project. So you need the whole blueprint folder. Back in your project's level blueprint, paste the nodes if you copied, um, you know, paste the nodes that we copied. Um, if you uh, copy the event begin play, it'll import as a custom event. You'll want to delete this and use a sequence node instead to maintain your existing logic. Make sure to properly set up the class reference, compile, and you're ready to go.
the NVIDIA DLSS interface appears with predefined settings. We can switch between resolution settings, toggle RTX, and adjust DLSS quality settings from DLAA to ultra performance. You'll notice there's significant FPS changes between these modes, depending on what works and what doesn't. One interesting quirk, uh, you know, Unreal Engine's uh, built-in FPS counter doesn't always accurately reflect the DLSS improvements. For the best visualization, you can use the new editor window when you are in play mode. You know, here with the DLLA uh, reflex support and frame regeneration, regeneration enabled, you'll see much smoother performance compared to the uh, to the viewport's FPS counter. Now, the developer stats, you know, they tell the full story. We're hitting around 85 to 86 FPS with frame generation disabled. Um, you know, our frame rate effectively helps. Now, if you switch to ultra performance mode and um, we're pushing 90 FPS, NVIDIA Reflex helps maintain responsive input despite these fluctuations, preventing that sluggish feeling you might otherwise experience with such dramatic, dramatic performance shifts. The combination of DLAA, frame generation, and reflex gives us the smoothest experience with the stats showing both improved frame rates and reduced latency. Now, this setup dramatically enhances both performance and responsiveness compared to our initial 20 milliseconds, milliseconds baseline or around 40 FPS. And, you know, if we, you know, switching to full screen in the viewport, we can see the performance differences. While viewport performance isn't ideal, enabling play mode still shows DLSS improvements, though not as dramatic as in the external play mode. Now, this uh, nowadays represents the, in the current industry trend. Most modern games require some form of upscaling to handle increasingly demanding graphic pipelines, especially since games aren't optimized in the traditional sense anymore. It's the trade-off we make for ultra-realistic graphics and advanced visualization techniques, although I don't necessarily agree with them, and I think, you know, games should just be optimized. Take this environment as an example. If we disabled nanite displacement on the landscape, it would look you know, more barren and less geometrically complex, but would easily hit around 120 FPS. With NVIDIA DLSS, we'd push even higher frame rates. But that's the balance between visual fidelity and performance. So if you want nanite displacement, you might actually need to use DLSS no matter what you do, or FSR. Looking at our interface now, we're hitting about 60 frames. You can fine-tune settings to match your specific needs. This functionality works in on any Unreal Engine project. So, you know, importantly, you can also leverage it in the movie render queue to upscale your rendered output. You know, the benefit, your engine can uh, render at a lower resolution and use AI upscaling, resulting in faster render times and lower video memory consumption since it's going from a lower resolution to upscaling to a higher one. Now, this is particularly useful if you're experiencing crashes during rendering. One last thing, navigate to edit project settings and search for DLSS. There are two critical options you need to enable. The first one is enable DLSS in editor viewports and enable DLSS in play editor viewports. These are off by default, which means your viewport isn't getting any DLSS benefits. Once enabled, your viewport will utilize DLSS upscaling. Just keep in mind that frame generation and NVIDIA reflex features aren't available in this mode, but you'll still see improved performance from the core DLSS upscaling technology. I want to thank our incredible community from our Patreon supporters and YouTube members to our Discord community and those who've purchased my projects from Fab. Your support and feedback mean everything to me. I truly appreciate all of you and I'll uh, see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.